Good morning to you all. It's another Wednesday morning. Glad that we're able to come to you live here on Facebook. We'll uh, upload this to YouTube later. Send this out to our members by email so that you all may be updated, informed on what's going on. We, of course, take time to tell you about announcements, so we talk a little bit about prayer from God's Word, and then also a word of encouragement from God's Word. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into our announcements today. Our members should have received an email from Dave about tonight's Bible study. That is, of course, again at 7 o'clock tonight, going over Acts chapter 20. Five. So, please look over that. Be prepared for the lesson this evening. We're thankful for Dave, his willingness to teach that class uh, Wednesday night. If you don't have the phone number, if you've forgotten, uh, please make time for that. Please ask questions. Get that number. We'd be happy to have you on the phone call this evening. Be a part of the Bible study this evening. Want to make an announcement about this weekend uh, is the Ohio Winter Lectures, uh, part of Fishner and Kinney, uh, specifically January 29th and 30th, so Friday and Saturday. Uh, we have uh, a tract here, a flyer they gave us with the times, things of that nature, of when they'll be, who's speaking, uh, and I believe they're going to do that through YouTube. So if that's something you're interested in, it will start Friday evening and part of the day Saturday. So watch out for that. Go to their YouTube page. Perhaps find a little more out there. As far as Sunday goes, we are still planning to meet in person. We're thankful for that opportunity. Meeting in person for Bible study at 945. So we encourage all of our members to be here for that. I believe it's the last Sunday if I... Uh, am aware of the correct information. I believe Sunday is the last Sunday uh, of going over those videos with Mike in the adult class. Uh, the subject they were looking at of the Bible lands, uh, I believe they're coming up to the last video on that. So uh, be here for that. And of course, we have classes for the younger people as well. Uh, and just a great opportunity for us to study God's Word. Uh, we will also continue to meet at 1030 that day. We'll live stream that service so that those of you at home can uh, listen to the singing, participate in the singing, uh, so that you can hear the prayers uh, and, and be a part of the congregation even at a distance. So keep that in mind. Sunday morning at 1030 we'll live stream here on Facebook. Uh, and Sunday's topic is going to be over temptation. It's going to be over temptation. What we're going to talk about is what is temptation. Then we'll look to the Bible to see examples of temptation throughout the Bible. And then, lastly, what's important for us is to know how to overcome. To know that we don't have to give in to temptation. To know that we can resist to know that we can live faithful, obedient lives to God, that we can remain spotless and blameless. So we look forward to that lesson Sunday morning. As far as other announcements go, we were contacted by Junction City Elementary School, uh, and they are in need for some supplies, those supplies being sweatpants, socks, and hygiene products. So uh, if you would, keep that on your mind if you're able and have the opportunity to help with that we'd appreciate appreciate it uh, we have the back table that you can drop those things off uh, and we're going to believe february 14th is the last sunday for that uh, but please be aware of those things sweatpants socks hygiene products for elementary age children and, and allow us uh, in thinking about that and helping those people May we be reminded of Matthew 5, 16. Jesus there is speaking, is teaching the Sermon on the Mount. And we think about his words about being a light to the world. This is an opportunity for us to let our lights shine so that people may see our good works and glorify God. And so it is by doing things like this, by doing this, we're able to, to fulfill scripture, yet we're, we're able to be faithful and obedient unto God in such ways. So please keep that in mind, help as you can. Those are the things I have 
to share with you. We didn't get anything in the mail that I need to share with you this week. So with that said, we'll turn our focus to prayer. It's always important in these videos to not only update you, but also take a moment and talk about prayer. And I hope these have been a benefit to you. Today, what we're going to look at is James 5, 16. James 5, 16. Now, I don't have every passage marked down that we've already covered, and perhaps we have, but it's always important to go over these passages, even if it's multiple times. But James 5, 16, this is what it tells us. It says, Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So we read that, and what it's really asking us to do is, to, uh, is talking to one another and praying for one another. That's the, the basic concept, and that's not difficult. That's easy. Many of us talk to one another all the time. We talk to other people as well. As Christians, we ought to be praying all the time. But the difficulty comes with this passage is about the vulnerability. Because what it's asking us to do to communicate with one another are those trespasses, those sins in our lives, those mistakes, those things where we've broken God's law. But here's what we need to keep in mind. Since we are all united with Christ, we are all on the same team and a part of the same family. We should not gossip or speak evil about our one another, or and think that we are better than one another. We should not have that kind of mentality. We need to encourage our fellow brethren and help them overcome life's challenges. Again, we're on the same team. We're part of the same family. We're, we're all striving for the same goal. And so just because that you are faithful and obedient unto God does not mean that I cannot also obtain that crown of life. That just because your name is in the book of life does not mean that I cannot obtain that as well. And so it's not a competition between one another. And because it's not a competition between Christians, we need to realize that we're on the same team, that we need to, to humble ourselves. We need to stop what we're doing, stop and be able to ask our brothers and sisters in Christ, what is it that we can do to help you? How is it that we can benefit you, to help you stay faithful, to help you stay obedient to God, to help you overcome those temptations? So again, it is diff it's simple, and what it's asking us to do is communicate with one another and to pray. But it's difficult because of the vulnerability, because of that judgment, because of, of worrying about how people, those individuals or others, will look down on us. But that, my friends, that should not happen within the church. We should not look down upon one another, but yet we should be uplifting and encouraging one another so we all may be faithful and obedient unto God. So, hopefully you'll take this uh, note to heart and perhaps we'll be able to uh, come closer together with one another and, and feel like we can open up with one another to confess our trespasses, not so that others can speak evil against us, not so that others can feel uh, as if they're more righteous than us, but so that we can help one another. So it is that we're honest with one another. So it is that the church can grow spiritually so it is that we can come together to be the Lord's church. With that said on prayer, let's take a look then at a word of encouragement. We've been going through the book of Philippians, uh, and there's some really great things for us to look at in Philippians. Now, we may have said this before, uh, but Philippians tends to be a very encouraging book. People tend to, to look at it. Uh, and see a lot of encouragement from it. But what we must remember about this is that Paul was not in a good place uh, at the writing of Philippians, but yet he was in prison. And yet, even though he was in prison, yet he was able to be full of so much joy, so much encouragement. So may that help us as well. But as we think about that, look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. 11 through 13, it says this, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. Understanding what Paul is saying there, of, of where he's been at in life, of where he's successfully traveled and been safe, uh, where he's also endured hardship and of shipwrecks. Paul has been able to teach people, reach people, share them, share with them the gospel. They've been able to be added to the church, and there are those that have wanted to stone Paul. He's, he's gone through all of these things in his very own life. But he says that he's learned to be content. That he himself has been rich and he's been poor. He's been with and he's been without. And in each circumstance, what he's saying is that Christ will give me the strength to carry on. Christ will give me the strength. Whether I'm rich or whether I'm poor today. Whether I'm with or whether I'm without today. Christ will give me the strength to carry on. And that sometimes the, the having uh, what you need to be with something and to, to be rich can be a stumbling block, can get in our way, can distract us. And so we need Christ in those moments. But we can also become disheartened if we are without or if we find ourselves to uh, feel as if we're poor. Then again, that can be a distraction as well because we become all worried and concerned about this life. But what Paul is saying, that Christ will give him the strength to carry on. That he's learned to be content. And may we do that as well. May we be able to be content. May we be able to find our strength, hope, and peace all through Christ. Not of this life. This life is passing away. So hopefully you are encouraged to look to Christ. To keep your eyes on Christ. To keep Him as a priority in your life. This has been uh, the announcements today. I hope it has been a blessing to you. Updated you. Reminded you of some things that we've already made mention of. Uh, but just want to remind you. Uh, ways that you can continue to help the congregation, you can help the church here at Somerset, your brothers and sisters in Christ, that you be reminded about prayer, and then that you can look to God's Word, always look to God's Word and be encouraged, no matter what's going on in your life. And so hopefully we can do that. Hopefully we can pray for one another and reach out to one another, connect with one another. Not everyone can be here Sunday morning, uh, and so we are praying for those of you that are at home uh, for your safety, and we pray that we're able to see you back here one day, being able to hear your lovely voices seen with us, uh, to, to be able to interact with you in person. Uh, and those of you who can be here, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday.